You are disappointed. You were told that I was a secret agent, a spy, dealing in espionage and danger. The fat man is Elzebul, a secret agent. And the other one is Fowler, a romantic writer. But why did Fowler meet him? You wish to meet me because you are a writer, young and romantic. You envision mysterious figures in the night, the crack of pistols, drugs and the wine. Because you wanted to know how a secret agent deals with dangerous situations. Instead, you have spent a dull evening in a French music hall with a sloppy fat man who, instead of having messages slipped into his hand by dark-eyed beauties, gets only a telephone call, making an appointment in his room. You have been bored. But he was disappointed. Because, Auzibel didn't look like a secret agent. He was fat, very fat. Fowler imagined that beautiful girls would give him messages. But, he just gets an ordinary telephone call, making an appointment. And then, there was his accent. Though he spoke French and German, but he had never lost his American accent. In short, Auzibel did not fit any description of a secret agent. It is midnight, and they are walking in the corridor of a French hotel. Ausable's room was on the sixth, the top floor. You are disillusioned. But take cheer, my young friend. Presently, you will see a paper come to me. A quite important paper, for which several men and women have risked their lives. Some day soon, that paper may well affect the course of history. In that thought is drama, is there not? Max, you gave me quite a start. I thought you were in Berlin. What are you doing here in my room? Max was slim, not very tall, and had a face. That resembled a clever, fox-like expression. There was nothing threatening about him, aside from the gun. The report. The report that is being brought to you tonight, concerning some new missiles. I thought, I would take it from you. It will be safer in my hands, than in yours. Ausable moved to an armchair, and sat down heavily. I'm going to raise the devil with the management this time, and you can bet on it. This is the second time in a month that somebody has got into my room through that balcony. It was an ordinary window, against which, the night was pressing blackly. Balcony? No, I used the passkey. I didn't know about the balcony. It might have saved me some trouble, had I known about the balcony. It's not my balcony. It belongs to the next apartment. You see, this room used to be part of a large unit. And the next room, through that door there, used to be the living room. It had the balcony, which extends under my window now. You can get onto it from the empty room two doors down, and somebody did, last month. The management promised to block it off. Please sit down. We have a wait of half an hour. I think. Thirty-one minutes. The appointment was for twelve-thirty. I wish I knew how you learned about the report, Max. And we wish we knew how your people got the report. But no harm has been done. I will get it back tonight. What is that? Who is at the door? That will be police. I thought that such an important paper should have a little extra protection. I told them to check on me, to make sure everything was alright. What will you do, Max? If do not answer the door, they will enter anyway. The door is unlocked. And they will not hesitate to shoot. Send them away. 
I'll wait at the balcony. Send them away, or I will shoot. Mr. Rosable. Mr. Rosable. Here is the drink you ordered for. The waiter set the tray on table, uncorked the bottle, and left the room. But, the police. There were no police. Only Henry, whom I was expecting. But won't that man out on the balcony? No. He won't return. You see, my young friend, there is no balcony. There is no balcony. What? It means, that Max jumped from the sixth floor, and most probably, died. Clever Ausable. Fowler was first disappointed by him, because of his looks, accent and room. But now, Ausable's cleverness has proved his conception wrong. Firstly, Ausable talked with Max, about the balcony, just to make him believe, that a balcony existed under his window. And then, knowing that it was his waiter, Henry, who was knocking at the door, he fooled Max by telling it was police. His cleverness on the spot would certainly have surprised Fowler. Thanks for watching the video. Please like and share this video, and subscribe my channel, for more animated videos of Class 10.